Hi everyone, Ladislas Maurice from TheWanderingInvestor.com. So I'm here in Nairobi for a few weeks. I've been spending quite a lot of time here speaking with lawyers, meeting agents, meeting developers, talking to fellow investors. And today I'm going to be discussing the real estate market in Nairobi, Kenya. So I did a video recently about middle income housing in the outskirts of Nairobi with interesting yields of about 10%. But here I'm going to be talking about Nairobi itself and the more premium neighborhoods. So I'm not going to be talking about the macro aspects related to Kenya. I wrote an article on this. You can click on the link below to read about the pros and cons and risks of investing in Kenya. In terms of the real estate market here, it used to do very well. It, it went through a big boom and then in 2015, it just uh, crashed alongside with a lot of asset classes here in Kenya. And since then, the market has just been, you know, kind of slow, but there's been still a lot of construction. So everywhere you look in the nicer areas of Nairobi, so here I'm referring to the northern part of Nairobi, so neighborhoods like Westlands, Parklands, uh, a bit deeper behind the Westgate Mall, there's a construction happening all over. So right now I'm in Westlands, so one of the most premium areas in Nairobi. And here you can see the, the big construction that's happening there. There's a new building here. I'm not sure you can see, but you can still tell here looking inside that actually most of it, a lot of the apartments still seem to be empty. So when we recently finished, everything's still empty. And just as an example, right here, this is right in front of the building I'm at. And it's a little house and invariably it's gonna be bought up by a developer, destroyed, and you'll see a new high rise popping up here within, within a few years. Um, so though Nairobi is lovely and is extremely green, the reality is that there's a lot of space. So it's that inevitably puts a cap in terms of prices in the medium term because there's so much room for development. When I went to the outskirts, we saw apartments that are going for about $250 a square meter with gross yields of approximately 10%, so that was attractive. In the nicer parts of town, so here in West Side, you're looking typically at between $1,100 and $1,500 a square meter, depending on the finishings and the building and yields, rental yields of about five, gross rental yields of about five to six percent. So not bad, but not fantastic either. And you also have to be very careful in which segment, which segment you target. There's massive oversupply in terms of three bedroom and four bedroom apartments, so large apartments, but there is a supply gap in terms of one bedroom and studios. Now, this sounds great, but the reality is, as this gap has appeared, now when I go around and I speak to developers, they all have plans for buildings with only studios and one bedroom apartments. So there's a supply gap for now, but within a few years, it'll get resolved and you see, you'll see yields um, coming down for sure. So in many ways, supply in the nicer neighborhoods is growing faster than the pace of growth of the upper middle income class. So a lot of buildings are popping up everywhere, but the question is who are the tenants gonna be? When you in invest in the outskirts, it's clear. It's you know the, the growing middle class and a lot of people are joining the middle class. So there's a clear market here. The liquidity in terms of rental market is a lot lower as you go higher in terms of quality. So the 1100 to $1,500 a square meter, that's for Westlands. If you go into Parklands, you can see apartments. You can find apartments that are a bit cheaper. Um, 
less than a thousand dollars seven hundred eight hundred dollars a square meter still a very nice area not as nice as as westlands here again the yields are maybe a little bit better but not that much better you're looking at six percent so now i'm going to show you an apartment here in westlands to give you to show you as an example expect to pay about twelve hundred dollars a square meter for this apartment the apartment is a three bedroom three bathroom approximately 130 square meters it's a new building there's security in front parking the building itself looks good but and this is very important that's something that people need to understand when investing here a lot of the buildings have maintenance issues so even though service charges are not particularly cheap probably about hundred fifty dollars a month you can see the pool is starting to look at a little yucky the water is not very transparent it's dirty no one actually swims here anymore so when people bought off plan the building must have looked great on the flyers and now they end up with a pool that is actually not very usable i mean objectively it's not i wouldn't jump in here and you can see just like things just lying around poor maintenance down there at the end all the tiles just piling up what's this some random hoses and that's an issue that you find when you invest in nairobi you buy a building that looks fantastic off plan you get delivery it looks kind of all right and then within a few years like why is there a random fridge here i don't know what are these things here at the back i don't know it just starts to look messy and the poor quality of a lot of the materials just gets exposed so here this was supposed to be a nice common area i don't know some for parties or whatever and it's just there's nothing so this is all wasted space in the building the gym which must have looked much better in the pamphlets just is pretty underwhelming i'm pretty sure none of these machines i mean this machine doesn't look like it works and yeah like what's this i don't know like it's not very inspiring it's just dirty everywhere so maintenance is a big issue and i saw this throughout most buildings not all of them but the vast majority really um, pools that just don't work anymore the heating system doesn't work people are incapable of fixing it so this is an example of a three bedroom three bathroom apartment fifth floor nice view very green it's very large like much larger than than most apartments in europe kitchen large uh, large pantry here and what people find interesting which is not very common in the west is this is like an outdoors kitchen for the help and a what so most people have live-in help so a maid or a nanny this would be her bedroom typically she's got her own private entrance so that she doesn't enter through the, the main entrance and her own bathroom as well. So pretty much all three bedroom and four bedroom apartments in these neighborhoods have a special section dedicated for live-in help. And the bedrooms are spacious. Here again, you have a place so a lot of people wash, uh, eat with their hands. So they use this to wash their hands after having eaten. It's typically, so this is a bedroom.
bathroom. The shower has a rather odd style. A lot of Indian developers put these in. And the other, the other bedrooms are pretty similar, I mean. So here are some examples of some pamphlets. I went to see a few developers. And look, it all looks beautiful, it all looks nice. And this is, uh, this would be about $1,300 per square meter. Look, beautiful. With like sky pools, everything. Location, fantastic location. Another one. Look, just the typical, typical propaganda. But, and this one here, this one was about $700 a square meter in Parkland's rooftop pool. So, I mean, objectively, you're paying $700 a square meter for a building like this with a rooftop pool um, in a city that is growing very rapidly with a booming population. It's not a bad investment, right? It really isn't. Like, if you look at it long term, it's objectively a pretty good, pretty good investment. It's better than buying in, in most European cities, and, and the yields are higher than in most European cities. Look, it's also very hard to choose the development. I'll just give you an example. I saw two buildings next to each other. One was complete. Apartments were going for about thirteen hundred dollars per square meter, mostly three bedrooms, and it was seventy percent empty. The developer hadn't sold. 70% of them. The development across the street, also the same price, but off plan, also three bedroom apartments, was 70% sold out and it was still under construction. So the reputation of developers is really key in this market. And if you come in as a foreigner that doesn't quite understand the market, it takes time for you to go around and speak to people to understand which developments you should buy into because some of the developers have bad reputations in terms of quality, in terms of finishings. You have developers from all over. So you have local developers, you have Indian developers, you have a lot of Somali and Eritrean developers and they all have a reputation or not and this is really something to, to factor into when making a purchase. So that's one aspect. So the second aspect is once you actually have the property, like we discussed, that the, the building management is actually competent um, and knows how to maintain the building itself. And that's a big challenge. So even apartments that are buildings that, are, that have decent finishings are often very poorly managed, which means that the building itself will depreciate faster over time. And the third one is property management is a problem. Um, it's, you have large um, companies that do property management here, but one is the property manager that you have to trust. And then secondly, it's also the staff. So I'll give you an example. Last set right now, there's a curfew in Nairobi. Um, everyone has to be home by 8 p.m. So what happens is people throw parties, they rent Airbnbs and throw parties. So a group of us, about 20 of us, went and booked an Airbnb, not on the platform, but essentially one of the guys had a hookup. So we go to this like really nice building here down the road actually in, in Westlands. And we go to, recept to the reception of the, of the high-end building and a deal gets done with the receptionist and we get the keys. And it was like all paid cash. So here we go, 20 of us with cases of alcohol or having a house party in a random Airbnb and I am 99.9% .9 sure that the landlord did not see a cent of that money. So the receptionist most likely took the money, gave the key, then has a deal with the cleaner so that the dealer, the cleaner comes early in the morning to clean so that no one knows that, that there was actually a booking the night before. So the property manager probably doesn't even know himself, so let alone the landlord. So it's, it's, it's a tough place to find honest management and competent management throughout the value chain. Because, you know, 
if you're one, you can get screwed over with the with the finishings when you buy the the actual quality of the of the of the finishings. Two, you can get screwed over by building management that ends up being very incompetent. Three, you can get screwed over by your property manager. Four, you can get screwed by the staff of the property manager. So it's you're you're not buying in in Switzerland. You know you're you're, you're buying in Kenya, and it comes with its own set of operational challenges. So, but that's something you can manage. You know, if you do your DD and you hire the right people, et cetera, and you put control mechanisms in place, this can, this can be managed. But something that is, that you can't manage really is the tax issue. So taxes in Kenya on rental income for non-residents is a flat 30% withholding tax. So it means you can't deduct any of the property management fees, property taxes, etc. It's a straight up 30% withholding tax on gross rental income. And that honestly is a complete deal breaker. This makes investing in Kenyan property really not worth it. It's objectively uninvestable. Um, there are some double tax treaties depending on where you live. If there's a double tax treaty between Kenya and your country of tax residency in some cases this amount can be reduced but then again it's a it's a withholding tax on gross rental income which is a lot higher than on net rental income after all the deductions overall i find that property is good value for money it's great if you want to live here and actually kenya very few people know this but kenya is a very interesting tax base in the sense that it does not tax non-Kenyan source investment income. So if you live in Kenya, if you're tax resident in Kenya and you have investment income from overseas, you do not have to pay a single cent to the Kenyan tax authorities. So though it's good value, one, the rental income, the tax situation makes it uninvestable, and two, I don't see any, any catalysts for a re-rating of property prices here in Nairobi. They are building a lot. And they're building also because there's a lot of money laundering from Somalia and South Sudan that ends up in construction here in Kenya. So all of a lot of that Western aid that going to Somalia and Sudan ends up in property here in Nairobi. There's a lot of space in the premium areas, so there's still a lot of space for construction. I just don't see any catalyst for, for price appreciation. So to play the Kenya card, I personally would go for listed equities. Some of the listed equities out there are offering dividend yields of 8%. They have almost zero debt on their balance sheets. They have double digit growth year on year. Some of them, others are, are dogs obviously, but some of them are very attractive. So if you want to find out more about these stocks, I really recommend that you sign up to Tim's um, investment newsletter. So Tim is the manager of the African Lions Fund who, that invests in stock markets, in equities here across the region, in Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, even as far as, as Ghana and Ivory Coast. I believe that's a better way of, of playing Kenya is by, by, by having a bit of exposure to the listed, listed equities space here in the country. Property for now, not interested at all. But there have been talks of a potential Kenya citizenship by investment program. So there's no clear outline in terms of what it'll be, if it's through a donation, if it's through job creation or potentially even real estate. If there were to be a real estate option, that would suddenly make uh, Nairobi real estate very investable. Um, so if I had the opportunity to buy I don't know, like in Turkey, $250,000 worth of, of real estate and just have to hold it for a few years and then I get a free passport out of it. That would be very interesting. I would not mind being a citizen of a beautiful growing country like Kenya, which would then give me more um, opportunities to travel and invest throughout the continent. So that's definitely something that I'll be monitoring. But until then, I'll stay on the sidelines when it comes to real estate in Kenya. As always, make sure to subscribe to the private list on thewanderinginvestor.com to follow my work as I travel around the world looking at investments 
and residency and citizenship options. YouTube videos are only a small part of what I do, so subscribe to the private list. Cheers.